Good afternoon. Hello. Um, I am inter interviewing today Nicole Karen from the Great Harvest Bread Company in Lexington. Um, this is the next in our series on Lexington Learns where we've been talking to people, business owners around town about how this whole shutdown crisis and, and now into reopening has been affecting their business. So mm -hmm. first I'd like to ask Nicole, you know, how have you been personally? Personally, I've been good, knock on wood. You know, um, I've, I mean, I haven't done anything. So, and 95% and of the reason there is so that I, there's never an opportunity for me to get sick and not be able to come into work. So right. I've been pretty strict about it. So I mean, it's been good, it's been fine, so. But that's one of the things, I mean, as a business owner, you have to, so much is on your shoulders when it's a small business. So you yeah. can't afford to not be there. Not at all. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. How's the business been doing? So, so to give you an idea, so basically, um, a really great deal of my business is catering. So I've always done a lot of catering. So that has probably taken the biggest hit. Sure. Um, we do a lot with the hospitals in Boston. So normally, when we are probably at the different hospitals at least eight times a week, we're down to just two. Oh, because wow. a lot of them have, they've canceled all the meetings. And I mean, so now we do, we're there every Monday at Children's and every Wednesday at Beth Israel. And that's it. And that's only one order each. Sometimes we're there, you know, four different hospitals in one day. So mm -hmm. that has been really, that's been tough. Um, but on the flip side, we do work with a catering partner also who um, has brought us a lot of business with, when I say a lot, it's relative, but Sure. Um, business with a lot of the bio companies that have been open the whole time yep. um, and need to be fed. So that has helped. Um, Bye. On the so that's been it on the catering front, uh, and I'm I'm just I'm waiting for it to come back because, like I said, it is such a huge part of my business. Of course. Um, so, but then, like for the probably the first month or so after, I'd say through where are we now in June through May. <laughs> I know, we're Howard. So um, where bread sales in the past haven't always been the best. So, you know, we're kind of made up. We have the cafe, we have the bread sales, yep. the sweet, and then the catering. So the bread sales were really good, probably for about a month and a half. I mean, like, and all new customers. Um, because we, like a lot of the customers that would come in every, you know, whenever, we haven't seen a lot of them. I'm slowly no. starting to see them now. But sure. um, we also introduced online ordering which has been huge for us. Okay. Um, so people, and people want to be able to just go online. They want to order it. They want to pull up. We do curbside, which has been great. Um, and takeout, people can come in, but people don't really want to come in. So, yeah. um, but we, so curbside has been wonderful for us. But I mean, overall, I look at, I mean, we're down a good amount. Like I, of course. You know, it, and it is what it is, but um, you, we've been lucky that we did get the payroll protection money. Okay. Uh, which at this point is almost done, but you know, whatever. Yep. It does help. So that helps. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of, you know, being really good about your costs so that we're not, you know, bleeding money while we're not getting in as much. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I just, you just try to stay positive. Staffing wise, we've been really, um, I'm, I'm very, very light on staffing and that's for a purpose. Like, um, I just, I want to know that the staff that is here, I know what they've been doing, that sure. they're not out and about, you know, getting exposed to it. So, and I'm, I'm reluctant to bring people back, but um, we have, um, one, I've had a couple bakers that were out, so I was doing that for a little while, but one has come back, um, and I think next week we will probably bring the high school kids back. Okay. It was kind of like you, whatever's comfortable with you and your families, then we'll bring you back in. But so we'll see. I mean, I've been closing at three every day. So okay. that I want to, I want to extend my hours back again and hope yep. to get a later crowd. But um, yeah. So yeah. So we kind of just, we're just doing it. We're lucky we've been open. Thank God. I, mean, I was going to ask. So you, you stayed open the whole time? The whole time. Okay. Yeah. We've been so lucky. Like I said, we've been healthy to stay open and we're food. So people, you know, we've been able to stay open. Um, right. So I'm, I'm so grateful for that, which is why I'm not complaining as much about the fact that the sales are down, but 
<laughs> That'll come. Well, I mean, it's, a that's a legitimate complaint. I mean, that, yeah. that's you know, when you're running a business, you have right. to have sales. It, it doesn't. It doesn't work if you don't. Like so hard breaks for all the comp the who the people who haven't. I mean, we just heard about one of the the tailor in East Lexington that has to close, and it's just it's so sad to hear that, you know. Yeah. But like on the other thing, we've had a. You know, I'm lucky because in East in East Lexington we have a lot of Arlington. And yes. Arlington has been so supportive also okay. of a Lexington business, which I think is great. Um, right. So yeah, I just, like I said, my fingers are crossed that as the companies start coming back, catering picks up a little bit, but um, yeah, so. Crazy. So one of the questions I had was, uh, you know, you said you saw a, a big influx of new customers, which is great. That's yeah. one of the things that's always difficult for a business is gaining new customers. So I you know. Know, if, that, if that happens right. naturally, excellent right have have people wanted different things during this has there been like comfort food that like all of us or? right like all of us i mean i'm like well i don't eat this stuff why am i eating it right now like, <laughs> yeah i mean like i said we like sweets have we we do a lot of sweets like muffins and scones and cookies and okay. whoopie pies i mean i because of the online ordering i have put everything that i sell on it so yeah. like people ordering like we didn't, we never sold a lot of sweets for whatever reason. Now people are, you know, they're definitely ordering more of that. Yeah. Um, I have like, you know, we do Pete's coffee. We do a whole, the whole line of Pete's coffee, mm -hmm. which I just heard they weren't open, but I didn't realize that. So like people are ordering things that, yeah, that we've never really sold a lot of. So that's, I love that. You know, I yeah. love being able to introduce so that they know like there's breads in here that I'm like, if you just take this cinnamon chip bread home and make toast of it, everyone's going to love it, but it's hard to get that out there. But now, mm -hmm. I, mean, we've, I mean, like I said, it has slowed down the bread sales, but I mean, people are buying like eight loaves at a time. And I'm oh my like, gosh, where are you putting eight loaves of bread? But yeah, so wow. definitely, definitely. What are people doing with eight loaves of bread? I don't know. Freezing it. Like I, one of my, one of my very favorite customers. I mean, she's wonderful. She comes from Belmont. She has four little kids and I'm talking like seven down to like one and she'll come in every probably every three weeks and get probably 12 loaves of bread. Wow. So she freezes a lot of it. And so, yeah, it's hysterical. So I don't know. Great. Do I'm your fathers give you recipes of things that they've done with your bread? Um, it's funny because I usually am the one who was like, oh, you have to make this with that or, you know, and some people come in and be like, oh, I made a French toast casserole, which we actually, because Great Harvest is a franchise. Yeah. So they, they have like a recipe like that, that we'll give out if they want, but not, I mean, not all the time, but people will be like, oh, we made French toast with the apple pie bread. I'm like, how did, how did you do that? But, uh, you know, great. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's funny, but they do. I mean, we have like the Scotty here. I put that online. People are buying it. Normally it's like one of those, you know, impulse buys, mm -hmm. but people are buying it. So, hey. Well, so that's, that was, that's a question I have for, if you introduced online ordering for the first time and you said demand was, was good for that, yeah. were you prepared or was it, was it something you had in the works or was it something you scrambled to get going? In online ordering? Yeah. I, it's so funny because I feel like, you know, I've been in business first. I'm in my 17th year, I think. And the franchise is always, and you know, Great Harvest is a small franchise. So, you know, like I'm friends with the CEO. That's like how small it is, right? Yeah. So they're always saying, oh, you should do this. You should do that. And I'm like, I'm like, listen, my way, I'm fine with what I'm doing, whatever, whatever. So they started pushing online ordering because they're like, listen, you have to do this. I mean, this is what people want. They want to just be able to go online. And in my head, I knew that, but I'm like, oh, I just don't feel like I'm dealing, I have, you know, I'm a single owner at this point. I had a business partner for the first, I don't even know, four or five years she was with me. So like you really, there's so much a juggling, right? So I do all the financial stuff. You want to do the marketing. I'm like, right. I'm, I don't even want to sit down and do it. But then the franchise was like, listen, we're so serious about this. We're going to give you three months free for the service and we're going to set everything up. So oh. I'm like, all right, I'm on board. And they said it. I know to that. <laughs> exactly. How can I say no to free, first of all? But it's been the best thing. And then since then, like, I'll, like, they put your basic, like, your lunch menu and your bread. And now I'm like, oh, we sell, you know, soups that you can make. That's on. Everything's online. Okay. And so when you look at someone's order that comes in, it's like, okay, I'll have a whoopie pie, 
an Oreo crunch cookie, a soup, a lemonade. So it's different, you know, because yeah. when, when you order something online, you're like, oh, this looks good. I'll try this. Yeah. So, um, so I, I definitely, I went kicking and screaming, but I'm so, like, so, cause it's nice too, because you get in like, and then once a day, the other thing that we've been doing, which I'm sure you've talked to many people that have had to do different things. Right. So yes. We always do deliveries for catering. That's, I have delivery people that do it, but we've started once a week to do just delivery. So okay. like tomorrow I put it out there on the Facebook page. I'm like, listen, tomorrow's the day, go online. I push them online because it's just easier. Go online, place your order, we'll deliver it wherever. Mm -hmm. So like we've been doing maybe like anywhere from like 10 to 15 deliveries on that day, okay. which has been great. Yeah. You know, people like I had a customer, one of my customers will come in on a Tuesday and be like, okay, I'm getting stuff now, but I'm ordering stuff for delivery tomorrow. You know, and normally you see them maybe once a, every couple of weeks. So um, yeah, so it's, it's been great. And now that I know how to use the program, it's easier. But I'm, I am very, like I'm not... Like, I'm not as technology savvy as, say, my 18-year-old nephew, who I'll be like, oh, will you do this for me? And yeah. he'll have it set up. So I kind of push back on things, but it's been the best. But everyone, I mean, if you notice, everyone's been doing online order. But that's great. I mean, it's, yeah. it's great that you took this opportunity to, yeah. to make that leap with the business. Because yeah, it was a leap thing has been horrible, this virus. But there's definitely mm -hmm. things, good things that have come out of it. I, and I know that that's really hard to say. But right. um even like just in general, you know, like one of my girl, my college girls who wouldn't be here with me is here because her thing got canceled, you know, for right. now. Like, right. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just the little things kind of, but yeah. Well, some of it is just about perspective. I mean, yeah. certainly somebody who has been ill or a family member has been ill or they've lost someone, you, there's no way to have a great perspective on that. But when it comes to adjusting your business, mm -hmm. I think the, the businesses I've been talking to have, who have been most successful are those who have looked for the opportunities mm -hmm. in, you know, if you're forced to change how you do business, mm -hmm. then you come up with innovation right. and, you know, now you have a new element to your business that, that wouldn't have been there before. Right. And, you know, it's, yes, it's a shame that it was spurred by something that has had, some, you know, yeah, some terrible consequences, right. but at least there, there's learning. I mean, that's why I started this series, right? It's Lexington Learns because the, the point is what, what are we learning from this? What are, especially, you know, in business, what can we take from this experience that we can go forward with next? Right. Like I look at the curbside, I'm like, I don't think curbside is ever going to go away because people, I, first of all, it's great. I'm, I, I'm looking down the road and I'm thinking, okay, like the winter. People aren't going to want to get out of their car. So, okay, pull up the curb. I mean, granted, like the town has been very lenient with us being able to put signs closer to the streets. And sure. you know, hopefully that's something that they'll continue to work with us for a while because it's super important. And I know like to me, um, it shouldn't be an issue that like I can, I put a sign in that little area right there. Right. You know what I mean, like, but they have, and if they look at how good it is for the business, I mean, curbside, I feel like it won't go away. Right. You know, like a lot of older people don't want to come in the stores. And um, so it's little things like that yeah. that really helped. And if, and if businesses don't do it, they're not getting the business. So you, you have no choice but to adapt. Well, and uh, I mean, any parent who's got a, a little kid in the back, I, oh my God, I remember, you know, when, when my kids were toddlers, I, I avoided going in anywhere I could. God, I got to get them all out. I didn't even think yeah. of that. I didn't even yeah. think of that. Like the woman I was telling you about from Belmont, I just tell her, because she's always got a car full of kids. I just tell her, pull in the driveway and stay there and lock the car. And so she doesn't have to unload four kids you exactly know? you're yeah. right I mean it, it we it's a lot it's been a big learning experience for you know you coast along in your business and you don't feel like anything will really put a wrench in it and, and this has just I mean it has wrenched everybody so yeah had you had plans for you know because you know one of the things that that like the 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 government is saying now is oh everybody should have a crisis plan and did oh, you yeah. have something like that in place um, not, not for this particular, <laughs> I can't say I have, I mean, I, we were quick to put it into place because, you know, the main thing is, I think it's harder for me. I can adjust, I can adjust to say, okay, 
here's what has to be done every day. We have to sanitize every day. Like I closed off the bathroom so that we didn't have people like, right. you know, and the good thing is, well, with the AC on, it's a little different, but we've literally, for most of the part, have kept the front door open. They walk in, they go up to the front. They, I have the credit card thing right there so that they don't even have to touch. We don't touch anything. Right. And like that's, a, but it's, you know, it's hard to translate that to, this is part of the reason why I'm like, oh, the high school kids are coming in. I have to show them this whole process that we go through. Like we have to be aware that even if it's busy, that to get the sanitizer out and be sanitizing. So I guess like you don't, I don't think I ever would have thought a virus would be something that you, you'd have a contingency plan for. Right. Uh, we all have contingency plans for like, here's what happens if the electricity goes out. Cause I've had that before. Like, you know, in that October snowstorm, I had to take everything from my freezers and bring it to one of my vendors. Like you have that, but a virus, I never, yeah. never would have thought. Yeah. Not at all. No, I, I don't <laughs> think I, I never have to think about this again. Like hopefully this won't like masks. I mean, we've got, you know, it's like crazy, crazy. Right. right. Like, so what, what will customers notice as you reopen more fully? Do you have outdoor seating? We have outdoor seating. And so right now we set up the patio. Normally we have one, two, three, we normally have five tables. And right now there's still the five. We pulled one of them out to put it kind of on the side of the building so that they can sit over there mm -hmm. so that everyone is six feet apart. So that's, yeah. that's big. Um, inside we, we do have inside seating, but it's not available right now yeah. to be available. Um, I mean, it's pretty much like it, it is like they don't like, we didn't go and get like plexiglass things, but we put like our tables that, um, our tables that we eat on, like in front of the counter. So you're not, so you're six feet oh, away okay. yep. from us. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much, that's, it's very, like I said, we only, I try to only have two of us here at a time so that we can be, you know, I mean, we have masks on, but that we can be away from each other. Right. Um, if we have a big catering day, I'll bring someone in, but you know, I'll get rid of that person as quick as I can. Um, but it's been, I mean, everyone's been good. They know what they have to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's still us. So hopefully people will come in and <laughs> help. <laughs> you know. So as you're looking toward the future, what do you see? Are, are you hopeful? Are you excited? Are you concerned? What do you see, you know, six months so, from now? I know it is hard. Like I will definitely be more concerned if catering does not pick up mm -hmm. because like I, I always say like, I, I wouldn't be in business without catering because right. it's so much of our business and, and the walk-in business is just not enough. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's funny cause I can't believe it's been three months already, but I definitely, if like six months down the road, if some of these companies aren't opening a little bit more. I mean, I have a little bit more hope because the hospitals will open sure. and I, you know, the residents will come back, they'll start having meetings and feeding them. And so that makes me a little hopeful. But like, I look at some of these businesses that I did big catering jobs for, and I don't know when that'll be back. Cause a lot of these companies aren't going back for, you know, to the new year or, you know, my niece works at Fidelity. She's not going back to like next April. Well, and a lot of them, I think, you know, on, on a different end of business, I've heard a lot of, a lot of talk that, hey, oh, we can do a lot of things remotely that we didn't, I know. we never thought we could do remotely. So it's, that whole people. business model is changing significantly. So yeah, I do like, it's 100% something that I would, I think about and, but you know, like I've got a lot of good things coming up, like, um, within i think by february the loan that i took out for to open the new place because i moved here four and a half years ago that'll be done so like when you don't have debt it's a little bit easier <laughs> to be like oh okay i don't have i don't have those payments anymore right. and i'm really really i run a really efficient business so um that's the good thing but um so yeah i mean i'm i'm gonna try not to think six months in advance but we're gonna go month to month right now <laughs> that's fair that's totally fair <laughs> and hope they take care of this virus. <laughs> so this, all right, here's a, this is a question that's off track, but I have to ask, what's the best bread for grilled cheese? Oh, so it's so funny. Ash, what's the best bread for grilled cheese? <laughs> they, they all had it today. So we have a cheddar garlic bread that is oh. literally like my best friend's son came in one day and I made it for him and he left and on his way out, 
he comes back and he's like, that was the best grilled cheese I've ever had. It is so good. It really is the best, 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 that's best. What, that's what I need to know. Because you do. Yes, my kids love yeah. grilled cheese. I'm telling you, it is the best, best, best bread. Excellent. So I have, I, I haven't had the chance to come in. Oh yeah. Yet. You want to come down. I know you're crazy. Are you working from home? I am working from home. Yeah. But my home is Bedford. So it's not, you know, I'm not far. Um, when, is, um, when is the visitor center opening? We don't have a firm date yet. There's still, um, I, you know, the town hasn't gotten the full sign off yet. So yeah. move -in dates haven't been assigned, but you know, still sometime this summer. Is uh, it coming along well? Yeah, is it, it nice? is. It is. When you go by, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It looks, from the outside, it looks like it is complete. So yeah. I can only assume that, you know, the work that's left is kind of finishing the right. indoor stuff. That's so um, nice. It's good for you guys because it was, it was getting old. <laughs> yeah. I have been in, I, I've not, I wasn't, even when I was in the center, I wasn't in it a lot, but it was definitely, it needed some love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it'll, it's going to be, it's going to be a beautiful building and it's going to yeah. be a nice place to visit, you know, both as a visitor right. center, but right. then also for, you know, for us to be in the middle of things with the businesses who are downtown and, right. and, and to host people, you know, people who aren't in the center of downtown when we have right. meetings or we have someone come in, we want to show it off to the best advantage. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we definitely, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. It need, you needed a place. Yeah, no, so. we're looking forward to it exciting like well, I, want, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk yeah, with me today thank you. Conversation. Thank you. um and i will definitely come in i uh, is the cheddar garlic bread every day cheddar garlic bread is pretty much every day Aaron. okay <laughs> yeah. i'll have to uh, every day i will yeah, so definitely I'll, come in because i'd love to talk to you about some other things you oh, know sure. yeah definitely. okay excellent Ryan. thank you thank you so much Aaron. i'm glad we got to talk Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.